Welcome to the Titus Timeout Podcast. My name is Randy Zimmerman, and today I'll be discussing calculating diffuser NC levels. First of all, if you're unfamiliar with or need a good introduction to published diffuser NC levels, I would recommend first listening to our podcast entitled Selecting Diffusers So As Not To Be Heard. In that podcast, I explain in detail why manufacturers publish diffuser NC levels based on a 10 dB room effect. In fewer words, I'll just say that it's a quick way to estimate a room sound level for small to medium offices with typical furnishings. If you can just keep that in mind, you're already ahead of the game. So what's the problem with published diffuser NC levels? The problem is that we all know that many, if not most, of the diffuser applications we encounter have nothing to do with typical office environments. We select diffusers going into hotel lobbies, airports, hospitals, classrooms, really any place you can imagine, and most of these spaces bear no resemblance to a typical small office. Let's consider operating rooms. They're typically much larger than a private office, so that would seemingly help to reduce the room sound level. Unfortunately, they aren't furnished like offices. They have hard surfaces in the form of floors, countertops, medical equipment, cabinets, etc., and they are typically served with laminar flow diffusers, also known as low aspiring diffusers. Are these diffusers ever used singularly? No, they are installed in continuous arrays of 8, 10, 12, or more diffusers to create a sterile zone above the operating table. This means that the sound of the diffusers will always be additive. So this begs the question, what good is a published NC level for a single operating room diffuser? The answer is, it's really of no value at all because the environment bears no relation to a typical office in terms of room effect and we know that there will always be an additive effect. So what should we do? Ideally we should ignore published NC levels for diffusers in this type of application and instead look at sound power levels. Although manufacturers typically don't publish sound power levels for diffusers, some manufacturers have selection software that can provide these values. If they don't, it can often be requested from them. They should be able to provide octave band sound power levels for either bands 1 through 8, bands 2 through 7, or possibly only bands 4 through 6. Diffusers typically set their sound levels in bands 4 through 6, so that's okay. Let's say that we have a diffuser at a given airflow with a published sound level of NC22 and the following sound power levels in bands 2 through 7. How can we estimate diffuser sound levels from sound power data? Well, first of all, let's look at the additive effect. We can always multiply sound sources by using this formula. The total sound is equal to the sound of a single device plus 10 times the log of the total number of devices. Let's say that we have eight of these diffusers in our array. The total sound equals the source plus 10 times the log of eight, which tells us to add nine to the original source. Now we can correct each of our octave band sound power levels by adding nine decibels. The published sound level of NC22 was based on an assumed 10 dB room effect, but we're going to calculate our own space effect by using the Schultz equation. The Schultz equation says that the space effect is equal to 25 minus 10 times the log of the distance from the device to the listener, minus 5 times the log of the room volume in cubic feet, minus 3 times the log of the octave band frequency. So if we plug in the following parameters, a distance of 5 feet because we have a 10 foot high ceiling and the occupants will be standing, a room volume of 9,000 because the room measures 30 feet long by 30 feet wide, and then we add in our octave band frequency, we can calculate a space effect of 
So if we pull all this together and we take our total sound power for our array, then we apply the environmental adjustment factor. This is the correction factor applied to any devices sound tested in reverberant chambers. And then we apply the space effect that we determined. We get the following room sound pressure levels. If we plot these sound pressure levels on an NC chart, we get an estimated room sound level of NC30. The manufacturer's published sound level was NC22, but that was for a single device in a typical office environment. Our NC30 reflects the sound of an 8 diffuser array in a much larger space. So keep these things in mind. Published NC levels for diffusers often do not reflect real-world conditions. Room sound levels are best estimated by starting with sound power levels and then applying industry-recognized corrections. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and thanks for taking a time out with us.